Okay, continuing on. Um, this is another long one, so buckle up. Cain exposed, the cloak removed. We're in Genesis, but I'm not looking at it as a history book. I'm looking at it as a Christ book, a gospel book, and a book about God's grace. Amen. It is designed to convey the impression of God and Christ to wash and renew people. I know that this is the true sowing of the word. That's our work, quote unquote work. Uh, legalists, on the other hand, focus on work as a measure of productivity for God. It's about commandment keeping, stewarding their resources and what they can achieve in their lives. However, the grace builder, not worker, but builder, because we are building the, the habitation of God, understands that we are not working with our own materials. Amen. We're working with Christ. We know that the material we use is not the letter, but the spirit which gives life. Amen. Our hope is to convey something of Christ himself that washes over people and renews them so that they know Christ. That's the difference between actual ministry and vain jangling and clanging cymbals. Amen. There are many people who seem to have a lot of Bible knowledge, yet no Christ is conveyed. It's just vanity. If we are not conveying Christ, we don't have a ministry. We're not building. However, conveying Christ is far easier than the laborious work the legalists want us to do. They toil away thinking they'll be rewarded for it. And they consider us lazy because we're like Mary, not Martha. We're just sitting at the feet of Jesus, appreciating his word and sharing the appreciation with others. Nothing could be more relaxing, edifying, enjoyable, and satisfying. Amen. And because we're satisfied at rest and not freaked out, worried, and under condemnation, they accuse us of being lazy. They think that work means toil and sorrow and pleasing God means bringing the fruit of the cursed ground that you sweat and toil over. This is like Cain. This is the flesh. Amen. We do not, or excuse me, we want, oh, let me start over. We want to serve God, but we understand that we are co-laborers with God and God does the real work. As Paul said, one planted, one watered, but God gave the increase. 1 Corinthians 3, 6. Amen. He does all the work. All we're doing is sowing the seed. We're just speaking the word. Sometimes it's a seed the first time they've heard it. it uh, or excuse me. Sometimes it's a seed the first time they've heard it. Other times it's a watering of what they've heard. It's not just about the facts. The power is the life in the word, which is Christ himself. Mm, amen. Only he has the authority to give his life. Ministry is about Christ being conveyed, the life being conveyed, and this is beyond us. Amen. Usually, quote unquote, workers are individuals who meddle in other people's affairs, attempting to control them under the guise of discipleship, all while building their own vain religious kingdoms. Unfortunately, this behavior is becoming more and more prevalent on YouTube, but this is already the way it is in institutional churches. Yeah. There is a clear distinction between these individuals, the true collaborators with God, genuine New Testament ministers. As we've been seeing, there are two ways of living a religious life, represented by Cain and Abel. Two different perceptions of God, both based on what God said and did. One was erroneous, not seeing his character because the heart of the person is full of pride and vanity. This was Cain. On the other hand, Abel saw what God did and had a humble heart. He recognized he was a sinner, recognized how God justifies sinners through blood and approved of it. He said amen to it and then set his seal on it for offering up the firstling of the flock with 
or excuse me, which showed he agreed with how God justified sinners. Amen. Cain did not agree with God's way. It made Cain mad. The way I know when I'm dealing with an enemy of the truth and a wolf is when they get angry that their righteousness is rejected and they reveal the doctrine of justification actually angers them. It's one thing to be confused and feel condemned thinking, I just don't believe God can forgive me. I've done too, or I've, I've done too much. That's a humble heart struggling to understand justification. God invites us to come and reason with him so that we may be justified. Isaiah 1, 18 and Romans 4, 5. Amen. But Cain hates the brethren. He is full of his own self-importance and vain glory. He wants to be honored for his work and his toil. He's furious when his offering is not respected. And this or excuse me, and then he turns and hates the ungodly sinner who's justified by faith alone. That's the chief characteristic that tells you that you're dealing with a wolf. Amen. To a bystander, Cain and Abel may have appeared the same. They both looked religious and offered something to God. They were both dealing with God, working for God, serving God, and speaking about God at first. Many Christians and ministries appear to be similar on the surface until we gain knowledge and discernment. Amen. It all sounds like Bible to us, making it difficult to distinguish the difference. Cain wasn't originally exposed. Everything seemed fine. Who knows how many years they lived, maybe a hundred years before the offering mentioned in Genesis 4? Eventually, what Cain really believed came out and he was exposed. A religious person can hide behind their countenance. This is what the Pharisees did. They believed they were righteous and so did all the people. Jesus came to take away the cloak from their sin. He said, now that I've been among them, they have no cloak for their sin. John 15, 22. This was their fig leaves. They had covered themselves in their religious and, excuse me, in their religion and the pretense of having these nice virtues. They pretended to be loving and to love God. However, they secretly thought of God as a hard taskmaster. Inwardly, they hated him and didn't even know it. They were un, uh, excuse me, they were unknowingly siding with the devil. John 8, 44. Jesus came and exposed them. Their offense at them and the fact that he was justifying sinners and friends of sinners led them to label him Beelzebub, an unclean spirit and other uh, uh, derogatory terms. Their hearts were revealed. The cloak was taken away from their sin. Their countenance fell. This is what happened with Cain. He was wrathful and his countenance fell. The cloak was taken away from the sin in his heart. John 15, 22, John 8, 44, and Genesis 4, 4 through 5. There is not much surface difference between Cain and Abel. They looked the same. They both appeared, excuse me, they both approached the altar. They both offered something. They both seemed religious. They both appeared to be serving God in their own way. But when Cain's offering was not respected, he became wrathful and his countenance fell. There, there was no recovering from that. The falling of countenance is a serious thing. I'm not, or excuse me, I'm talking about, Mr. Robert, I'm talking about YouTube channels that start out seeming to be going in the way of grace. They seem to be going the way of God, so to speak. They're talking about prophecy and rapture, the gospel. They even say, you can't lose your salvation. But at some point, they start to get angry that sinners are being justified. Ungodly sinners who work not, but believe on him who justifies the ungodly. Amen. The Cain channels start saying, you can't just let these sinners continue sinning. <laughs> 
Their countenance falls and the cloak of their sin dissipates. They display their anger and defense at the way that God justifies sinners. That's really the root of their problem. They may seem to argue for justification, but why is it that every single one of their messages is about law? Hmm. Why do they say you can't let these sinners go running around and that they need to be disciplined or that God is going to punish them? <laughs> this is the cloak starting to come off their sin. Eventually, they start making accusations that go beyond just you can't let these sinners go around. They start looking for people's sin to accuse them. They want to find a way to exclude you and say you're not a believer. That's when you know that they don't believe the gospel. Amen. Sad to say, but it is true. Sad but true. <laughs> this is why 1 John was written, centered on Cain and Abel. John's epistle was not written it was not written to instruct us on fellowship, but rather to di uh, uh, dif differentiate between an antichrist and a son of God. The sons of God are recognized as sinners. They are not yet what they will eventually become, but they are still considered sons of God. 1 John 3, 2. Even though they are imperfect, they hold the hope that when they see him, they will become like him. Again, it goes back to the two mirrors. You know, who are you looking at? Are you looking at yourself or are you looking at and thinking that you have to change yourself or are you looking at the glass dimly, but you're focusing on nothing but Christ? This hope purifies them. They have an advocate with God. Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is the propitiation for their sin. 1 John 2, 1 and 2. Amen. They have faith and confess that Jesus came in the flesh. 1 John 4, 2 and 3. He came by blood and water as propitiation for sins. 1 John 5, 6 and 7. Amen. They acknowledge their sins and their propitiation, meaning they are in the light, which is the truth. 1 John 1, 7. This is how we identify them as the sons of God. However, those like Cain who walk in darkness and hate their brethren reject this path of propitiation for sins. They deny having sin, 1 John 1, 8. Claim they love God and instead they have fellowship with God, or excuse me, and insist they have fellowship with God. Yet their hatred for their brethren reveals their religion as a lie. 1 John 2, 9, 11, 9 through 11. If you hate your brother, whom you can see, you cannot love God, whom you cannot see. These individuals demonstrate love in word only, not in truth or action. They are exposed as though, uh, excuse me, as those who hate the brethren. This is what John discusses. They may depart from us, but just like Cain, they cannot remain in fellowship when their countenance falls. Amen.